image of Jaguar as being for old people, but V8, supercharged, 370 horsepower, I don't really get it. Hey guys, just gonna do another video on my Jaguar XKR. I'm not gonna go into crazy details, but um, there's there's other videos out there that can cover things in better detail than what I can do anyway. Um, for example, ground block gizmo, and also uh, to the garage, uh, very good details on and breakdowns of almost every part of on the XK8 XKR. So yeah, just gonna try and get some shots today. The weather's pretty miserable, uh, it's winter, it's kind of what you'd expect, but uh, it's been really nice the last couple of days, but I've been rushing around catching up with family, so I haven't had the chance to do a video on this yet, but hopefully we'll find some nice spots, get some footage, thanks for watching, enjoy. The roads are absolutely filthy at the moment, I had my car cleaned and detailed before I came over, but uh, there's so much muck literally mud and everything in the country especially where you pull over to let other cars pass it's just like mud everywhere so that gets brought onto the road but it's all right a bit of rain might wash it off so that'll be okay so yeah this is a 2001 jaguar xkr and it's the r instead of the 8 because it's a supercharged version and i'm so glad i got that just to go all out the original story was to get a vehicle to to uh, use when I come and visit family in England and drive between family because last time I did like eight trips to Devon from Surrey and then Wales and Norfolk I went everywhere so I wanted to get something and three years ago for five thousand pounds you could get a Porsche Boxster uh, BMW Z4 uh, even a Honda S2000 and then the XK8 started at 5,000 um, but then I thought why not get something I really really want because I don't want a Porsche Boxer that much as good as they are handling stuff and maybe I'll end up with one one day but the appeal wasn't there um, so yeah why not spend a little bit more between 5 and 6 you could get an XK8 uh, obviously the cheapest end and um, for like seven to ten you could get the supercharged xkr so i thought i'll save my pennies and get one so i sent some money over to my dad and my cousin went and looked at the car for me get it got it checked over and yeah this is what i've got um i just love it so much so there had been two years because of covid i meant to go back the idea was that my dad and cousin check the car out get it buy it on my behalf and then when i come over on holiday it's already there and i can use it and then covid got in the way so it's been over two years two years and two months that i've been waiting to drive this car and it's probably the nice well definitely is the nicest car i've ever had so as a car person that's never spent money on car on a car and the first time i've ever done it I wasn't able to drive it for two years or even see it um, it was very painful and frustrating but that's life worst things happen at sea um, and now I'm here finally driving it it is amazing I, the two of the, the standout points that I wasn't expecting the comfort the seat there's so much give in the seat and it's so comfortable and second of all the wine from the supercharger I love it, it's so good. Supercharger time. Um, every time I have an opportunity to accelerate a little bit harder than it probably would like me to, I do. Uh, it's just awesome and it really has up and go about it. It's obviously a big, very floaty car, but uh, so much fun. And I drove to Devon and back on Sunday, 
pick up the drone from my mate. Yeah, so I already know from that, I already know from that journey how comfortable it is. So that was like five hours just over driving 300 miles. Um, it does it with ease and it's just such a nice quiet cruiser. And then when you want it to be, it can be flat out <laughs> as well. Bit of fun. So yeah, 2001 supercharged version is 370 horsepower and the standard XK without the supercharger is 290 horsepower. Uh, <laughs> the trip on take because my dad basically looks after the car and uses it a little bit. The fuel consumption average was uh, 16 and a half miles for a gallon and but the average speed was 19 miles an hour and I've reset that and I'm doing about 24 miles to the gallon and average speed I think it was 60 maybe 60 miles an hour something like that from all the motorway driving um, I'm gonna dip in and out of Australian and English language by the way uh, that's just gonna happen uh, yeah I just love this car so much it's just beautiful it's luxurious it's obviously not a sports car but it has a bit of oomph when you put your foot down in a straight line it's just amazing um, I'm just so happy with it almost speechless uh, yeah I'm so lucky to have it as well and I'm so glad I made the decision to spend the money on a car that even though I wasn't very likely to get to drive it often just that it's here for when I do want to drive it because it is amazing and I can't wait for my next trip <laughs> hopefully back in summer I can come back and uh, have another trip planned I'm going to Scotland this evening actually uh, with my brother on a road trip up there again unfortunately raining almost every day so I'm not sure how much I'm going to get to use the drone but hopefully get some nice shots with it um, yeah back to the car uh, it needs some TLC some paintwork needs touching up long term uh, the roof lining as you may have noticed already needs sorting out um, the I think I've ruined the speakers already just turn them up a little bit too loud with a bit too much bass um, there's definitely music being played in this vehicle that's never been played in it before drum and bass hip-hop and things like that representing the young jag driving crew um, boots not as big as I thought it would be it's fine it fits my suitcase in another bag but I think maybe I got used to my Holden Commodore and which has a big boot even with the seats up obviously it's a different car but yeah just a bit surprised by that um, yeah as an all-rounder this car I mean it's just I don't know what else you could get that could compete really I know I'm biased but it has really good comfort it has amazing looks which is obviously subjective but the way they've went for that e-type look it really really does feel like that as well like in that long distance drive to Devon when I was just thinking about the car obviously looking over the bonnet the way it curves and I've never driven an Eve type but I've looked at a lot of photos and having this wooden steering wheel and then seeing the way the bonnet disappears and then where it goes over the wheel like the wheel arch that bump reminds me of like a D type and an E type so then you got the comfort you got the looks and then you got the sporty punch of having that supercharger and then the sound of the supercharger arguably the exhaust has like seven silencers on it or something but I'm not sure now I've driven it I'm not sure I would change the exhaust because because I want to hear the supercharger I know I believe um, Grand Blog Gizmo and perhaps I'm not sure about to the garage I think he did as well put exhaust on their their cars but uh, they're the XK8 so then you wouldn't have the supercharger sound Whereas I think if I put it on here, I'd miss out on that sound and it's such a good sound. So I don't think it really needs, for me, on this vehicle, it needs a sports, sportio exhaust. 
I like the silence because I intend to drive this a lot of long distance driving um, and if I change the exhaust then that'll go so sporty luxurious looks amazing in my opinion sounds great it's that perfect balance for long distance driving you want to put your foot down you hit the supercharger if you don't you don't hear any noise um, and it's got enough space in the back if you're doing a long journey and obviously the back seats no one will fit in so that's just more storage space really um, and then you've got the J gate which admittedly I haven't played around with yet but you can hold it in the gears you've got sport mode you can turn the traction control off I've seen a few videos online with people having fun in these so you definitely can do it um, I don't think I want to thrash this too much in case it breaks but yeah it's uh, it's such a great package oh and also value now obviously people can argue all day long yeah you pay less for the car but the upkeep is more expensive I don't mind paying lots of money for upkeep of something that I love so much just doesn't matter yeah it comes into it you have to be able to afford it but I'll sacrifice other things to spend it on this vehicle because I love this vehicle and you know I'm gonna have to make sure I've got money set aside in case something fundamental breaks and once I've got that then I can spend money on the TLC and touch up things I've got I've got new tires and need new tires that's just normal maintenance but you know I changed the badges I've got new badges for the tires uh, for the center caps and then I've got a new badge for the front bonnet because I think all these things enhance the vehicle and I want to be proud of it proud to own it and it be in good condition and not in get at least maintain the condition I don't want it to get worse so yeah maintenance might end up being high fuel costs yeah fuel costs are very high in England but I'm on holiday and I budgeted for a holiday it's not my everyday car I mean so far I've driven driven it two times in two years because of Covid my dad drives it as well in between keeping it maintained for me which is very handy for me as I don't live in England but yeah unless anything catastrophic goes wrong I'm, I'm happy to spend money to maintain it look at it it's so beautiful <laughs> it's the supercharge it has these real vents here on both sides it's got the supercharged badge on the front the XKR also has this subtle little lip sets it off even when I sit up properly the furthest of the front of the bonnet I can see is the very start of this vent I can't see any of that when I'm driving it's uh, a bit disconcerting but you just got to allow for that extra space I don't have front sensors only rear so um, yeah got to take it easy when I'm parking and things and pulling out of driveways that's another big deal you got to allow for that it's a little it's quite low nice little XKR there you look at the support on the headrest there your head just sits in there perfectly Love it. it's so comfortable honestly right anyway on from the comfort it's got all the basics um, that you'd expect from a modern car I guess but it had it in 2001 there was no real option with those slight variations with the trim but I think it was more just the CD six disc CD changer was an option but you're basically you're either getting an XK8 or an XKR and everything else came with it heated seats uh, lovely cassette tape some of you might not even know what that is um, traction traction control off button and you got the J gate there I haven't played around with the gears yet sports mode and that's the um, on off basically for cruise control which I didn't realize the first two and a half hours driving to Devon I was pressing it pressing it in different ways on the steering wheel here um, couldn't work it out and then obviously I read the manual and then the on off buttons there of course I've got this uh, phone to take calls you never know I mean you might get an important call coming in I do like that it obviously dates the car but of course it's an old car and I like that feature that will be staying in there forever yeah look I'm just so happy with it um, it's an awesome GT car Grand Tourer and 
I love it. And I hope I can maintain it and keep it at my dad's for years and years and do many trips through Europe in it. Um, if I'm able to come back in the summer, I will again this year do a trip hopefully through France or Germany or something like that. I just want to use it. This car is just for using 100% and I want to create good memories in it. Good memories of having a nice car because those days they're dwindling. It might not be obsolete like the doom and gloomers say that, you know, there'll be no petrol cars after a certain year and that'll be it forever. But they're going to be phased out. Things will be more expensive. Fuel will be more expensive and parts will be harder to get as it all closes in on the combustion engine. Unless something different happens like, um, what is it? Hydrogen engines? Is it hydrogen? I watched the Ari's garage video on the JCB engine. So that was interesting input from another perspective. It's not all about electric cars, but either way, I just want to make sure I have these memories. There's nothing, I can't think of anything worse getting to be, if I'm lucky enough to get to 60 or 70 or 80, looking back and never have enjoyed cars. I enjoy going to the car events and other people's cars. I've been lucky enough to do that, but I've never enjoyed my own car. And now with this Jaguar XKR, I can do that. And I'm just so excited and over the moon. And I can't wait for this road trip to Scotland with my brother. Should be fun. Thanks for watching.